every day over 800 million people go to bed on an empty stomach, although we produce enough food to feed everyone. Food production will need to increase by over 60% to feed the global population in 2050. Climate change is already affecting food production and the livelihoods of the over 500 million smallholder farmers around the world, and the challenges posed by climate change are expected to grow in the coming decades. Fortunately, we have solutions to make smallholder farmers climate resilient. Index insurance, climate-ready varieties, agroforestry systems, aquaculture and many more. Many of these solutions can also realise gender equality, create jobs, recover degraded land, conserve water resources and mitigate greenhouse gas emissions. But we need to realise these advantages offered by agriculture with appropriate investments, policies and farmer-led action. Let's realise the agriculture advantage in climate action. And really, we do not have enough space on the globe to continue with this notion of poor peasant farmers who are not producing surpluses, who are caught in a poverty trap because of the way they are farming. In 2014, total investments in uh, land use mitigation and adaptation was estimated in 7 billion, of which three went to adaptation. You will be very sad to hear <laughs> that the total climate financing in that year was 391 billion, while only 7 billion went to agriculture, mitigation and adaptation. In most of the portfolio of the private sector is on energy generation, mostly. In private sector, we haven't, in, sorry, in land use agriculture, we haven't seen much private sector investments at the moment. And that's, that's what I find very interesting in this panel, that there are already very interesting and innovative uh, opportunities for private sector engagement in the land use sector. So, you need to set the scheme and the big uh, uh, shots in a dark suit in Wall Street, they will do the rest. Wouldn't be wonderful that they plug trillions into biodiversity. I mean, let's imagine agriculture was a party, one of the, the states, you know? It would be the size of China and Russia and the US and Canada all combined. It would have a population of 3 billion people and it would be responsible for 25% of admissions. Now you can imagine where they would sit in the party negotiations, at least on the high table. What to do about it? Well, it's really something about blending technical innovations and developments. Those kinds of, of simple, very often quite cheap, not very expensive actions, including small reservoirs, pump irrigation technologies, and also rainwater harvesting. It could be a WhatsApp group of young farmers, such as we have in Southern Africa, that is already learning. This is an example that uh, I can give directly to say, yes, it is agua happening not only in one commodity, not only in one age group. It's happening across borders. So you see something, knowledge and learning spreading like wildfire that is being shared by farmers. The, the, the challenge is that in three years, in four years, you're not going to have necessarily a huge result. But in, uh, you know, in 20 years, the, 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 the cost benefit of investing in, in breeding is going to be absolutely phenomenally big in terms of climate adaptation. Um, you may have heard that FAO has said that if they did have equal access to these resources and services and finance and so forth, uh, women smallholder farmers production would increase by 20 to 30 percent and global food production would increase, increase by 10 to 14 percent globally. As a Kellogg company, we rely on resilient food systems in order to have a business. So working at the intersection of food security and hunger and sustainable agriculture, these aren't just nice things for us to do. These are actually very critical to ensuring that we have a business going into the future. So what is the agricultural advantage? Essentially, we're trying to make the case that agriculture is really important in the whole climate change debate, and it has to move forward. Pamberina food security. Pamberi na blended finance. Pamberi na social capital. 
At COP23, over 400 participants gathered to make the case for realising the agriculture advantage in climate action. The case is undeniable, and it is now time to transform this opportunity into reality. Bambarina Agriculture.